Good morning. Um, well, I wanted to make some remarks about Judge Robart's ruling today. The chief did as well. Um, our time is limited because we are going across the street to the police memorial, so we're going to have to have a hard stop, so I won't get to everyone's questions. I um, want to emphasize a couple things. Number one, we will not get the judge's written order until next week and will not be able to read it. So until we're able to read the written order, there's many questions that we will not be able to answer today. I will tell you that I talked to four different lawyers who were in the courtroom and got four different opinions on what the judge said and what it meant. Um, I will say that uh, overall, I am very, very heartened by the judge's ruling today. Um, the consent decree, which is an agreed order between the Seattle, City of Seattle and Department of Justice, focused on the use of force and the potential for biased policing. And over these many years, our officers have done everything that the court and the consent decree has required, and today the judge has confirmed that. The Seattle Police Department's policies on use of force have been approved, and again today the judge confirmed they're in full compliance. Its training on use of force is in full compliance. Most importantly, and I think this is the most important thing, the Seattle Police Department's use of force itself, particularly the use of force in crisis situations, is not only in compliance, but the judge has noted it leads the nation and is a national model. I'm very heartened that the judge said that he is very proud of the work that Seattle Police Department officers do, because I will tell you as mayor, so am I. This department has accomplished more than I think almost anybody thought was possible at the time the consent decree was entered. We went from an investigation by the Department of Justice and the U.S. Attorney's Office when I was there that found that 25 percent of the time that force was used, it was used excessively. And while there was disagreement on that at the time, that was the mark against which we were operating. Today, a record number of calls responded to by our police officers, both 911 calls and on view calls. And force is used in a tiny fraction of cases, as the judge noted. And most of that force is what's called type one, which before the consent decree, we did not even track. So I agree with Judge Robart that across the board, everything that is in the consent decree, every metric that is in the sustainment plan is on track and, and we think we will be able to finish. Now my understanding with the judge's ruling is he was concerned about three things. One was the use of mediators and arbitrators in the um, way that disputes are handled. The second was the burden of proof in mediation. And the third was how this 180-day rule operates when OPA gets a complaint. I really want to see the judge's order on all three of those things to make sure that we've made the right record, because I think when the judge views all of the facts on those issues, he will determine that we are in compliance on those issues as well. Um, I would note that nobody, particularly Chief Best and I, think that Adley Shepard should have stayed on the Seattle Police Department force. Um, he was very disturbed by and showed that video again. I was disturbed by when that happened. I was U.S. Attorney at the time, um, and Chief O'Toole fired him because of it. He was ordered reinstated, but really important to make clear, he has not been reinstated in the Seattle Police Department. Chief Best, as Chief of Police, made the determination she would not reinstate him. We are fighting that in court, and if the court rules as we hope it does, we think that will go a long way to show Judge Robart that the process is working. I think that I'm also very heartened by the fact that the CPC, at my last check, raised dozens and dozens of ways that it thought that the collective bargaining agreement violated the consent decree, and the judge ruled the opposite today. And again, narrow that down to three issues. We want to see exactly what that order says about those three issues so we can address them. Um, but I will tell you, standing where I am today as mayor of Seattle, I never thought I would be standing here 
having a force that had done so much to reform itself and to change how it polices. And I really want to give the credit to the people that deserve it. Number one, the men and women of the Seattle Police Department who every day are showing up at their job and doing everything we've asked them to do. I also want to thank OPA and the CPC who have been very good at the oversight functions and also the Inspector General's office, which is new, but I think has a lot of promise to be that force in the, in the uh, city of Seattle when the consent decree is removed and the monitor goes away. So all in all, I know while many of you will focus on the areas where the judge had concerns, I think that where he said we are in compliance, I am, again, very, very heartened by it. If you look at what the consent decree was focused on, you look at what the sustainment plan we've been working on for the last year and a half, he said we are on track on every single metric that mattered to the court over five years. So I know that the, the chief wants to say a few words and then we'll take a few questions and then again, I think we have to go. Chief? Great. Good afternoon, I'll be very brief. First, I just want to echo the words of our mayor in that I was absolutely pleased to hear that the Honorable Judge Robart heaped praise upon the men and women of the Seattle Police Department for the hard work that they have put in over the years. He recognized the Seattle Police Department as a well-deserved national model in the area of use of force, de-escalation, and all the other areas listed on the consent decree, and in fact said that we were 10 out of 10 on the substance of the the consent decree. So I look forward to hearing and um, seeing his order when it comes out. We don't want to guess what it is, but we look forward to hearing what it is. We are committed, absolutely committed in the Seattle Police Department to making sure that we have an iterative process where we're always looking to do constitutional policing. That's it. Do we have time for probably two questions? Madam Mayor, are you saying that you do not need to renegotiate the accountability portion of the, S of the SMOG contract? I think I want to see what the judge's order actually says on those. Once we see what the, the, what the court has ordered, then we can determine what the next steps are. Um, again, literally almost everyone who walked out of that courtroom had a different view on exactly what he was ordering us to do. Um, having been in and around court decisions for a very long time, I think it's we want to see what the judge has ordered and then we want to see what the next steps are. Is there different things that we have to bring to the court's attention to supplement the record? Are there, are there things that we need to do to go back to the bargaining table? Are there things we can do without going to the bargaining table? I think there's a whole range of things. But again, I think the really important things that you cannot lose track of. He said we're on track. He thinks we can be done by 2020. And 10 out of 10 of the things that he had on his, uh, his plan for sustainment, we are on track. So again, I'm very heartened. Um, if you looked at the length of the CPC brief and the number of issues they raised, he has narrowed it now to three things he has concern about. We want to see exactly what those concerns are before we address them. He presented virtually an indictment of the Seattle Police Guild throughout his presentation this morning, laying out their history. Is this city willing to take on the spot? I wasn't in the courtroom, but I took, uh, that is not the report I got from people. I think the important thing is, that it is real police officers, the men and women of the Seattle Police Department who are doing the job every day and are the ones that have to do the work in a way that's constitutional. The union is not doing the work, the men and women of the police department are. And what I heard is the, is the judge saying, and they're doing it really, really well. We're gonna focus on getting the work done and making sure that our officers have the tools they need. And one of the things they need, and we're seeing very clearly is, they needed to be paid what they were worth. Without this collective bargaining agreement, we would still be paying our officers 2014 wages in now a 2019 Seattle. We've seen that it's difficult to attract and retain police officers in every major city across America, and our department was suffering the most because we weren't paying what we needed to pay. That was loud and clear in the exit interviews that were covered this week. People said that now that there's a new contract, morale was boosted. We wanna make sure that every police officer knows the judge found, the mayor believes, and the chief believes they're doing their job they're doing it well, they're doing everything we asked of them, and we will continue to back them and give them the tools they need. Mayor, 
Mayor, I'd like to ask about last night's public safety meeting. If I could. Is unwilling to, uh, not the mayor, the union is unwilling to move on arbitration and the 180 days. What's the next move by the city on an issue like that? I think you guys are posing a conflict that doesn't exist yet. Let's see what the order says, and then let's see what we're going to do about it. I really think that you do a huge disservice to the men and women of the police department and to the city of Seattle by playing up a conflict that we're not sure what the judge is exactly asking us to do. So I will tell you that the, 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 bargain, the collective bargaining agreement, the guild came to the table in good faith. We got an agreement after four years, um, and let's see what those few things are that the judge, how he writes the order. Um, but I think if you, again, I just want everyone to roll the film back. Many of you weren't here covering this story, but we had a series of incidences, video after video, showing the unauthorized use of force, which culminated in the death of John T. Williams. And it was a crisis stage, and people believed that this department couldn't rally. And this department proved them wrong. It has remade itself, and we are the national model now. And we're going to be the statewide model now that Initiative 940 has passed. Because one reason that all the police departments are trying to recruit Seattle police officers is because we've already been trained in de-escalation, and crisis intervention, community policing. Those things that every department in the state has to do, Seattle Police Department is doing very well. So again, I just want to be really clear. I know everyone wants to run to the, like, oh, there's this area of contention. Let's see what the court order says. But really, focus on where we are. 10 out of 10, the judge said praised the police department, said that we're using use of force constitutionally, that our oversight is working. All of those pieces that are actually in the consent decree, he says we're on track. On these pieces that aren't, we want to look at it, see where he is, and then we'll make decisions after that. Thank you very much. Takeaway on last night's public safety meeting, Mayor, like what did you think? What was your takeaway from that? Any changes that you would um, suggest as a result? Of I think the more we have people in Seattle in a room to talk to, to the mayor and city council and demand and hold us accountable, the better it is. And I think, again, this goes back to what we're saying. I think Judge Robart recognized it today. Policing in Seattle is a tough job right now. And our police are doing a very good job on trying to get it right. Um, but we need a lot of resources on the table that aren't police. We are not going to solve the issues related to homelessness by policing, as the judge said today. We need to have a whole range of tools. Um, I said it last night. I'll say it again. Real public safety starts with strong and resilient communities. It means good health care, good education, opportunity. Kids know that they have a future for themselves. If you have all those things in place, the need for police goes down. And when we need police, we want them to be exercising the best constitutional policing and community policing possible. And I think that's what the chief has instilled in this department. Thank you very much.